All right. So, in the hands of a master slinger, a one kilogram heavy rock can do some damage. But now let's go, let's go let's go let's go a bit further. Remember in the Valley of Elah, I said the ground was made of barium, which is twice the size or the density of a normal rock. When that rock with that density was thrown, it traveled at 35 meter per second. Now that's faster than a baseball player throws his ball to the pitcher. That's that's some speed. Now when they when they swing uh, when they swing the thing over their heads to throw, they swing it about between five and seven revolution per minute, because depending on the length they've got. Of course, the smaller the faster, but then you don't you're not. Uh, how can I say you can't put a too heavy rock on it? But when you've got a meter sling over your head for seven 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 times, it travels at thirty five meters per second. Now that's uh, I mean. Uh, if you are hit by a tennis ball, it's not even as fast. And I've seen people go down when a tennis ball hit them. So that's quite quite fast. But now, let's focus on Goliath. And I'm going to show you a few things about Goliath that might change our assumption that David was the underdog. Now, um, According, according to scripture, let, let, me, let, me, let me get down to this before, before my time runs over again. There are some clues. When, uh, I'm not going to read the whole story of Goliath. You need to read it yourself. And we know about it. I mean, we've been looking at it for so long. We know about it. Uh, some clues make us believe that Goliath wasn't what he appeared to be. Let me let me show you what's happening. Clue number one. The Bible says that Goliath was led, was led onto the valley floor by his attendant, his armor bearer, the person that was a con he was led by him. Now, why was a man this size led? Why was he led? That's our first clue. Clue number two, the Bible makes, makes it very clear that Goliath moved very slowly. Very odd for a trained warrior. Clue number three, then there was this very long moment when Goliath took some time to see David and to react to the shepherd boy. They, they were time. And I mean, they, they were in a valley and some, if somebody coming down the mountain, you can see him from far. But Goliath started yelling when the boy was standing almost in front of him. Clue number four. He yells at David, and this is scripture. He says, am I a dog that you come against me with sticks? Important. S. Plural. Which is not the case. All David had was a staff. But yet he yells at him, why do you come to me with sticks? He only had a staff in his hand. Is that some clue? Let's carry on. The, the clue number four. Uh, number five. The shepherd boy takes one stone and hits the giant right between the eyes. We know that from Sunday school. Right between the eyes at Goliath weakest point we need to understand how how's that how is that possible clue number six why was it necessary <clears throat> for david uh, for goliath to have an armor bearer why was that necessary why couldn't he carry his sword like normal people and he is 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 you know his sword is on the, on his side his shield is there and his sword is on the other hand and the javelin was normally at the back, so he could pull it and throw it. But the Bible says that he had the armor bearer. So he, the, the guy was wearing all his weapon, leading him down the, the valley. 
which is quite strange. Now, let's have a look at Goliath and what could be found out. Find, findings number one. Goliath as a giant, uh, over the, uh, it was like all the giants, over eight feet tall. I have a certain sickness. It's called uh, gigantism, and it's affected with acromegaly. Now, we have uh, a man called Robert Waglow, who was eight foot, 11 inches tall who died early, who was also had that sickness. <clears throat> now, acromegaly affects or create, causes a small tumor between the pituitary gland, which causes abnormal hormones growth. Now, you will see it. I don't know if you guys remember Andre the Giant. He used to be a wrestler. He died, a, friend, a French person. Uh, he was also uh, almost eight feet tall, and he was a wrestler, a big guy. Now, when you when you look at him, if you knew him, you will see that a giant uh, with a uh, gigantism makes the forehead to grow abnormally large and forward, almost like a caveman. the The chin comes out, and the forehead comes out. So. This is one of the causes that was that caused the, the, the medical community to say that this is what happened with Goliath. This is why David could kill him. Because what happened is, if Goliath had gigantism, then he had abnormal growth, which made his forehead to stick forward. Thus, he could not wear a normal helmet. Because in those days, the helmet that they wore covered the forehead and had a, a small flap that covered the nose as well. But then Goliath, having a protruding forehead, could not wear that helmet, thus making this forehead vulnerable. So when David cast a stone and hit him right between the eyes, the Bible says that he fell. Now, he either felt dead or he felt unconscious. There's another finding. The, the pituitary gland is located right between the eyes. And it causes the, front, the frontal part of the forehead to grow abnormally. And it causes pressure upon the eyesight, causing nearsightness. So that could be the cause why Goliath says, Why you come against me with sticks? His vision was blurred because of that sickness. See, David had only one. He had his staff, and that's quite a big staff. But Goliath thought he had many sticks in his hand. He said, you come against me. Am I a dog? You, go, you carry sticks to, to eat me with? So that could be a cause. And remember, what, what did Goliath tell David? Come to me. Come to me. Why? Because Goliath couldn't move that fast. He wasn't going to catch up with a 16-year-old lad. He wasn't going to catch him. He wasn't. He was too slow. He was too heavy. And his, his joints were heavy. His joints were sore. These are not things that we speculate. These are medical researchers. And these uh, and you study the, this this person that died a few years ago. The first thing that the first thing that they are they are is pain in a joint because of the size and the weight that is upon them. So because they've got pain, pain in their joints, they walk heavily and they walk kind of skewly. And they walk, even if, you are, uh, if your legs are not skew, you walk very heavily. For surely you can't run that fast. And Goliath told David, come closer so I can, I can feed your carcass to the birds and to the beasts. So these are all clues that we we understand. Uh, Goliath had some weak spots. God knew about them. Nobody else knew it. God knew about that. And 
I want you to understand, when we come back to the five stones, five stands for grace, five stands for Kudobini's brothers, or five stands for the five officers of the church. The Bible says that Jesus is being made wisdom to us. Does the cure for this global Goliath we're facing today lies within the five offices of the church? Something to think about. So here we have a giant. Here we have a Goliath. He cannot move very fast. He's hoping David comes close so he can whack him. You've got a giant that is nearsighted. He can't actually see his opponent. He's, he's, he's having trouble seeing what is this guy holding in his hand. And then we have a giant that has left his weakest spot open because of his condition. He couldn't wear a protective helmet. I believe that every Goliath that we face has a weak spot. And only by revelation we, the church, will discover the weak spot. We, we mustn't stand, stand and wait as the army is dead, both on what side. Now we are waiting, hoping for the best. I'm calling to the church and speaking to all the Christians over this globe. Anyone listening to this video, I'm calling to you. Does a cure to defeat Goliath lies within the church? I believe it does. I believe that we need to pray. We need to understand our enemy. And we need to figure out what is God's plan. Because I believe God's got a plan for this. And I believe that revelation should come through the church. I pray that we might, we might see Sometimes the Goliath that we face are not what they seem to be. When this Goliath hit this, the, our globe, I was wondering, is there perhaps something behind it? Is there perhaps another curve to this? Now we know for sure, according to scripture, that this virus doesn't come from God. The proofs are there that it's a man-made thing. And according to scripture, John 10.10 10 says, the, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, if you look at what's happening globally, we fall under all three of them. And in this time period, this is Easter month. Easter, where we gather together as saints and celebrate the cross, celebrate the grave, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Let's look at the origin of the virus. And you'll understand. I, I believe, I strongly believe there's a curveball that will be revealed by God that this, this virus is hiding. My brothers, my sisters, my beloved members, Let us, let us make good use of this time. Let us be in prayer 
more than usual. We don't have any excuse not that we don't have the time. We have all the time. We are now in lockdown. We are confined to our homes. Although, according to the rumors I heard, some people are not are ignoring the laws. I hope they are not going to reap bad things by doing ignoring what we were ordered to do. I pray for their safety. I pray for that they might not uh, cause any damage. But I'm speaking to the church tonight. I'm saying, church, let's pray. Let's be one in spirit. Let's be in one. Even we know, we, we, we know our church buildings are not the church of the Bible. But our church building is where we come together as a family. Because actually we are the ecclesia. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. So regardless where you are, regardless where I am, this is my study at home. I spend all my prayer time here. I spend all my studies here. This is my, this is my small building. But we are the ecclesia. We are the body of Christ. Let's use this time. Let's us make use of this time where we can double up on our reading of the Bible. We can double up on our studies with the Bible. And we can double up in prayer. Can you imagine if the church that is confined in their homes start praying instead of one hour a day, they pray two hours a day? Instead of two hours a day, they pray four hours a day? Can you imagine the impact that we can have? Maybe the Goliath that we're looking at is maybe God God will make use of that. Not that he gave it, but he will make use. God God, God takes uh, something negative and turns it into a positive. I've seen it many times. Let's rise. Let's rise. And let's pray. God will give us a solution. And let's pray that no one lose their life again. I want to tell you, I'm looking at the Ameri America, the U.S. status. Thousands died. Italy, Spain, thousands. And I'm wondering to myself, how many are Christless? God bless you. God protect you. God be with you. Amen.